Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Christine. I like to read dark and disturbing things. I also like to get a lot of book mail. And one package I look forward to every month is my Nightworms package. And we have the June Nightworms package, so let's open it. So I used to subscribe to pretty much any book box that was out there at some point or another, but the one that has stuck with me the longest, um, even in my time of trying to cut back on buying things, has been Nightworms. I just can't seem to let this go. I love getting this every month. It is a horror a book box subscription, and well, it's not really a box, it's a package, and it focuses on horror. Um, a lot of times we'll get like a a new release hardcover and then a lot of times the second book will be like a paperback indie horror book and it has just introduced me to so many new authors and I love getting it. So without further ado let's open her up and see what's inside. I do like to mention this in case you follow them on Instagram but they do um, put like a sneak peek out every month of what's going to be in the package where you have to like swipe to actually see what's inside so you can keep it a secret. I personally like seeing what's in there because first of all, I'm gonna forget by the time I get it, which I have forgotten this one. But I know enough to not purchase that book because there had been times where I was buying the same book that I was getting. So I really do appreciate that they do that. Okay, so I see a hardcover, a smaller hardcover, a little package and a little something extra. So here is this. It usually just contains the theme of the box, a bookmark or two, maybe a sticker or a magnet. This is a subscription that definitely focuses on the books. Oh, I already love what I see. Okay. So our theme for the month of June 2024 is Family Tree. And here is the artwork on the other side of that. I see two signed book plates for our books. I see a sticker of a scorpion. Uh, it says Legacy of Violence. And here is what I was freaking out about because I love when cute and spooky combine. This is a magnet and it's got this cute little treehouse library with ghosts. Look at this guy sitting up here. So cute. This is definitely going on my book cart. And the extra item, something I never get tired of getting in subscription boxes is coffee. I love me some coffee. This is Haunted Cups Coffee. We have gotten from this brand before. This one is called The Curse of the Monkey's Paw. A cursed coffee that will make you go bananas. Oh God, banana nut bread. I love banana nut bread. I have never had it in a coffee and I'm a little bit picky about bananas flavor, flavored things. So I'm really hoping that it tastes genuine because if it has like that candy banana, like banana Laffy Taffy flavor, I don't like that. Um, but I'm excited to try this. I'm gonna have to try it in the morning because I'm filming this. It's almost five o'clock tonight. I'm not gonna, we're not going down that road. Okay. Okay. So the smaller book, oh, that's cool. It's a hardcover, but I, it doesn't have a book sleeve, which I, I kind of like that. So we have a Woodworm by Layla Martinez. Oh, this must be where, oh, look at this cover. You know who I think is going to like this is Sarah from Wicked Reads because it's got the bug in there. This is translated by Sophie Hughes and Annie McDermott. That must be the inside of their little house there. Uh, 
I have no idea what this is about, but I really, I'm digging this. Okay, here we go. The house breathes. The house holds bodies and secrets. The house is visited by ghosts, by angels that line the roof like insects, and by saints that burn the bedsheets with their halos. Built long ago by a small-time small time hustler to control his wife, the house won't let their daughter and her granddaughter leave. When the mysterious disappearances of a boy draws unwanted attention, these two shut-ins, they are witches, or are they simply enraged? Combine forces with the spirits that haunt them in the pursuit of something that resembles justice. In this lush translation by Sophie Hughes and Annie McDermott, Layla Martinez's eerie debut novel is class-conscious horror that drags generations of monsters into the sun. This sounds freaking amazing. Um, I cannot wait. I have not heard of this, but I am excited. And on the the front, the quote says, a house of women in shadows built from poetry and revenge. I like that. I think this is going to be right up my alley. It's about 150 pages. Ooh, I'm excited for that. And next we have... Ooh, I don't know this one either. I'm, I'm ooing because this is actually textured. This is The Red Grove by Tessa... Fontaine, author of The Electric Women, Woman, which I'm also not familiar with. Let's see what this one's about. What kind of world might we have? Who might we become if everyone were truly safe? What price would we pay for that kind of freedom? There are secrets beneath every community, even those founded with the purest intentions, secrets as strong and as reaching as the roots that keep us connected to one another and anchored to home. The Red Grove is a special place, protected. Some say a spell was cast by its founder, Tamsin Nightingale. Some say the mountain lions stalking the nearby hills guard its mysteries and its boundaries. Some say the mighty redwoods keep its people safe. Yet a man has died on Red Grove's sacred ground, and Luce's mother, Gloria has vanished. The Red Grove is Luce's whole world. She is utterly devoted to its mission, its rituals, and its history. Still, she knows that her mother, frustrated free spirit, though she may be, wouldn't wouldn't just leave without a word, wouldn't leave Luce's little brother Rue and their aunt Jem, whose life and care in a suspended state they call Everdream depend on Gloria in every way. But strange things begin to happen as Luce tries to figure out what her mother has, where her mother has gone. Clicks echo from the trees, flies pound against the windows, and a strange man keeps calling the phone. The deeper Luce digs, the more she must ask if her beloved home, the women she admires, and the stories they might tell built on, might be built on a devastating lie. Tessa Fontaine's The Red Grove is a story about mothers, daughters, sisters, and dangers of being a woman in this world about the flawed, fierce choices we must make to protect what we love. So this is reminding me of another book I read. Let me see if I could find what it was because it was a few years back. Okay, I had to go back a bit. I read this in 2022, I, The History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw, where is kind of this community out in the woods. And that is what it sort of is reminding me of. Um, but this one seems like it has a more feminine focus. These both sound good. I am definitely, uh, the one that is kind of resonating with me a bit more is Woodworm. I keep wanting to say Wormwood, which I think I have other books with that title. Um, so let me know if you have read either of these. I think, let's see. So this one was just released, so you probably haven't unless you had an arc, but this one is from 2021. Um, but yeah, I'm very interested. Banana nut coffee, banana nut bread. Yes, also interested in that. So that is everything that was in the June Nightworms package. I do remember the main book that is going to be in next month's package, which is something I've already read, but I am very excited to own a copy of it for myself. So I am already excited for the next one. If you have made it to the end, leave me a little bug emoji. If you want to say hi and you don't have anything to say, 
Other than that, thank you guys again for watching and stay spooky.